Okay, so in this uh, topic, topic of receptor, okay, in the receptor, now we want to know what receptor cells can do. Okay, so a receptor cell is a cell that can respond to a stimulus by initiating an action potential. But in, before they action, uh, initiate the action potential, they will action, uh, initiate the receptor potential first. Okay, so the ability of receptor, they must be able to convert one form of energy to another form of energy, which is the electrical impulse in a neuron. So they must have this ability to convert the energy. For example, you look at table 19.4. So in table 19.4, you can see that I have a series of this receptor. For example, in retina, in our retina, we have the rods and the cone cells which detect the light energy. So this light energy will be converted to the impulse, okay, or electrical impulses in a neurons, okay? For example, our taste buds on the tongue, so detect okay, the chemical potential. Can you see that? Detect the chemical potential, and this chemical potential allow us to, right, uh, so that the taste bud will be able to convert this chemical potential energy into the electrical impulses. Again, we have the olfactory cells, detect the smell, we have the Pacinian corpuscle, detect the pressure and the touch, okay, uh, Masonian uh, corpuscle also for the touch, a uh, raffini ending of the skin can help us to detect the temperature. So those stimulus will be able to be converted to the electrical impulses by the receptor cells. So we're going to look at a few receptor cells and how they can generate the receptor potential later. So we do have some others. So you can see that uh, for the balance, for the hearings, okay, and also the power receptor for the placement of the limb, okay, stretching, we, those are the receptor in our cells. Okay, so we can classify this receptor into two different kinds of the, uh, the receptor. One is a specialized cells that make a synaptic contact with the sensory neurons. And another one is these receptors are part of the structures of the sensory neurons. Now look at this. What actually, what are the differences here? If you look at these two, okay, these two neurons, you will re realize that the receptor, the receptor actually are the parts of the neurons. Can you see that? The receptor, they are the parts of the neuron. So they don't have a specialized cells. For example, our Pacinian corpuscle, that just now I say that they have the capsule, right? The capsule cover the nerve ending here. So it means that if you don't touch it, you won't have the stimulation. But if you touch it, then you can see that stimulation of pressure, will exert the pressure, then you will allow, eh, we will be able to allow the sodium ions to enter, therefore generate the action potential. So this kind of neuron, for example, Pacinian corpuscle, they are parts, eh, the receptor, this kind of receptor, they are parts of the sensory neurons okay can you see that together so this part are receptor but we do have a receptor cells which is specialized so if you look at this here is the rot cell the rot cells have the specialized uh, features to detect the light so then the general action potential then allowed the action potential to travel across the synapse into this bipolar cells or we call it a sensory neuron are you clear? So it means that if you look at this structure, the rod cell is not a sensory neuron. The rod cell is a specialized receptor cells. We call it right? specialized receptor cells. So these specialized receptor cells actually can synapse with our sensory neuron and allow the sensory neurons to generate the action potential. Okay, so where is the receptor potential? Receptor potential only can be generated at the receptor that okay we also can classify our receptor into two different i mean based on the location of our body one is to detect the external stimuli we call external receptor for example the heat the light the pressure and the chemicals okay like for example the chemical that we taste okay for example the salt okay that means the acids okay citric acids okay for vinegar right okay so those are external receptor again detected by external receptor we do have the internal receptor for example detect the stimuli changes 
within our body, for example, blood pressure, CO2 concentration, water potential. Can you see that? Those are the receptors inside our body we term it as the interior receptor, right? Interior receptor. So now we look at the Pacinian Kopowski. Just now we learn about Pacinian Kopowski. Pacinian Kopowski actually in the skin, they are part of the, this receptor, okay? They are part of the sensory neurons, okay? So the ending is surrounded by several layers of the connective tissue known as the capsule. And the ending of the sensory neurons is, has no myelin. So you look at this diagram. Okay, so this is the nerve ending. So this nerve ending covered by a layer of the capsule. Can I see that? A layer of the capsule. So when this layer of capsule is something like insulator, so this insulator actually cover, right, cover the sodium ion channel like we have already talked about this just now. So when it cover the sodium ion channel, so nothing happened. So entire neuron actually at the resting stage. So we say that it's a resting potential, eh? resting potential. But when you touch on this capsule, so when you touch on this capsule, we're going to deform the capsule. When you deform the capsule, you're going to expose the sodium ion channel. So allow the sodium to enter. So when the sodium enter, when the sodium ion enter, because they are sodium ion, they are positively charged. When they enter, they're going to generate the receptor potential. At least now, because it's a receptor, so we term it as receptor potential. So look at this graph now. Initially, we have the resting potential. So when you apply the touch, because of the sodium ions enter due to what? Due to the deformity of the cell membrane. So therefore, you can see that the slight increase in the membrane potential. So this slight increase, we term it as the receptor potential. So when this receptor potential finally, okay, finally reach the threshold value, then it's going to generate this, what we call the action potential. Are you clear? So this one is called as a action potential. A series of events. Huh? It's not the one event or one uh, value, but it's a series of events that we generate this action potential. Okay. So what's the mechanism action of the Pacinian Kopowski? So when the pressure is applied to a Pacinian Kopowski, so capsule is pressed out of shape, deform the nerve ending inside. So the plasma membrane of the receptive area, okay, where we have the receptor, of the neuron is deformed. So now we can see that voltage-gated sodium ion channel and voltage-gated potassium ion channel open depend on where, okay? So sodium ion move into the cells this during the depolarization, you can write down. And potassium ion move out of the cells during the repolarization. So, so movement ion increase the positive charge inside the eh, exons, right? When the sodium ion move inside, so increase the uh, positive charge. Therefore, the increase in the positive charge term as the receptor potential. And just now we talk about receptor potential. So if the pressure is large enough, when we can reach the threshold value, then it can trigger the action potential to be generated. So this is the easier understanding about this Pacinian Kopowski, eh? Pacinian Kopowski. Okay. So now, next one we look at our taste buds. Okay, we look at our taste bud. Now, taste bud slightly different. Right? As I say that one for taste bud. Now, why taste bud slightly different? Because taste bud, okay, they are not. They are not part of the neurons. Right? They are not part of neurons. They actually synapse in the neuron. They are specialized receptor cells. Okay? Specialized receptor cells. So we do have a different taste bud actually okay, detect different chemical. So we have five kinds of the taste. Okay, we have first, sweet, second, sour, third, saltiness, next, bitter, and another one we call the umami, okay, the MSG, okay, the MSG or uh, monosodium glutamate, the taste, okay, so we call it umami, okay, or umami, okay, so those, we have five kinds, so each kind of receptor, they're in charge of a particular taste, for example, if our, our uh, taste bud detect the salt, so what we detect, we detect the sodium 
ions. Are you clear? We detect sodium ions because the salt. Okay. So you stick out your tongue, then you can see that your tongue is not smooth surface because the tongue covered by many, many small bump. And this small bump we call it as the papillae. Papillae is a plural. Papilla actually is the singular. Okay. So you can see that we have a lot of these papillae. So this papillae, you can see that they have this, what we call the taste bud. Okay. So this taste bud actually synapse with the, the taste bud actually synapse with the sensory neurons. So these sensory neurons will bring the input to the central nervous system and interpret the, the sense. Okay. What kind of taste that we have. Okay. So now let us look at what actually happened here. So we do know that our tongue is covered by many small bumps or we call it papillae and each papilla have many, many taste buds. Okay, so each taste bud we have 50 to 100 receptor cells that are sensitive to the chemical in the liquids that we drink or chemical from the food that dissolve in our saliva. So each chemo receptor is covered with a receptor protein that detect a different kinds of the chemi chemical that we eat. Okay, so there are several types of receptor protein detect a different type of chemical and give us a different sensation. Total, we have five types of taste, sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and umami, okay, or savory, okay? Now, why spicy is not inside the list? Why spicy? So we don't have a chemical actually detect the spiciness, okay? So one of the experiments that you can do, okay, later, okay, but do it at your own risk. So why I say this? Because you get a chili and rub the chili on your skin. You will feel the pain. Okay? You will feel the pain. So basically, spiciness, when you eat the spicy food, you are not, spicy is not a taste. Okay? Spicy is not a taste. Spicy is a chemical that actually activating or stimulating our pain receptor. Okay? Spiciness actually stimulates our pain receptor. So that's why if you rub the chili on your skin, you feel hot and you feel the, I mean, uh, the, the, the pain, it's because your pain receptor is stimulated by the chemical inside the chili. Okay? So basically, eating spicy food is a self-harm, right? Because you trigger your pain receptor. So always remember, spicy is not a spiciness, it's not a taste. Yeah. So our five tastes will be sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and umami. Okay. So sweet food, sour food, salty, bitter, those are the tastes. Okay. So chemoreceptor in a taste bud that detect the salts are directly influenced by the sodium ions because we do know that sodium chlorides they are the salts. Okay. So this ion diffuse or more precisely facilitated diffuse, eh, diffusion take place through the highly selective channel protein in the cell surface membrane. And again, guys, when the sodium ion diffuse into the cells, you're going to depolarize the membranes, correct or not? Okay, again, now guys, look at this. So we have the special channel protein. So these special channel proteins allow the sodium ion. So this is the external environment. This is inside the cytoplasm. So it means that now we have the sodium ions diffuse in. Why sodium ion diffuse in? Because your food contains the sodium ions, right? So try to imagine, guys. Initially, this receptor cells at the resting potential, negative 65 millivolts. But now because of sodium ion enter, so from negative 65, now it becomes negative 64 millivolt and so on. And the change in this case, we term it as the receptor potential, eh? the increase in the positive charge inside the cells due to the sodium ions is termed as the receptor potential. So if there is a sufficient stimulation by the sodium ion in the mouth, then the receptor potential is large enough to stimulate the opening of the voltage-gated calcium ion channel. Okay, so this part a little bit hard uh, for you guys to imagine because we haven't done the synapse yet. But generally, we do have the voltage-gated calcium ion channel. So look at this, yeah? So this is the receptor cell.
So receptor cell, we have this uh, ion channel for sodium ions to enter. Okay, for sodium ion enter. So when sodium ion enter, it triggers the actual potential. Cranots is large enough. So it will cause this the special channel protein known as the voltage-gated calcium ion channel. Okay, so voltage-gated calcium ion channel allows, open, right, because of change in the voltage, right, so allows the calcium ions to enter. When calcium ion enter, what will happen here is it will carry out a series of the events until what we call the neurotransmitter will be uh, secreted. So look at this, what happened here is we have the sensory neuron. Okay, the dendrite of the sensory neuron. What will happen here is they will release a neurotransmitter. The release of the neurotransmitter is going to stimulate our sensory neurons until it generates the action potential. Are you clear? So how the event actually takes place, we're going to look at it okay, either tomorrow or in the next lesson or the following lesson. Okay. So again, guys, so because the food contains sodium chloride, okay, the salt, so sodium ion enter into the receptor cells. So it generates what we call the receptor potential because they depolarize the membrane. So when this receptor potential is generated, if the receptor potential is sufficiently large enough, then it's going to trigger the entry of the calcium ion. So calcium ion will cause the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter and the neurotransmitter is going to stimulate or activate the sensory neurons eh, to generate the action potential. So calcium ion enter into and enter the cytoplasm and leads to the exocytosis of the vesicle containing neurotransmitter. And neurotransmitter stimulates an action potential in the sensory neurons that transmits the action potential to the T center in the cerebral cortex of our brain eh, to interpret the signal. So other chemical okay, chemoreceptor in the taste bud use different methods. For example, to detect the sweetness, we detect the sweetness by stimulating the G proteins. Okay, so now we know about the G protein. Okay. So the G proteins, we know that so you're going to okay, activate the enzyme and the neurocyclase to produce cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP will act as a second messenger, activating a cascade to amplify a signal leading to the closure of the potassium ion channel and hence depolarize the membranes. So when the membrane depolarized already, then what will happen? We're going to generate the action potential. Okay? The closure of the potassium ion channel. When the potassium ion channel closed, means that we don't have the potassium ion to leak out. So there is accumulation of the positive ion inside the cells. So therefore, you can have negative 65 shoot up to uh, negative 64, negative 63, negative 62, which we term it as the receptor potential. Okay? So with this, I have done for the today class.